Well, thank you for tuning in to another video from me. And as you're aware, it's not the greatest scenery. <laughs> And yes, I know I'm a talking head as you see, uh, but let's just get right into episode three about the Pentax K3 Mark III AFC. All right, so to kick things off, we're going to use full auto active area and we are going to switch this to type one for both the autofocus and auto exposure sensors to be tied in together to get the full proper way of uh, subject recognition working. And we're going to start with stability mode uh, for the AFC. Now stability mode in AFC is basically, uh, basically used for smooth, consistent movement of subjects such as cars, trains, bicycles, people walking, things like that. Now, listen to the lens re-driving as I move toward and away from bodiless Bella. Remember, this is stability mode. So right now I'm not moving at all. And you hear nothing. Oh, there we go. A little bit. So you can use this as I have in regards to AFS and AFC. So you don't have to toggle back and forth because it is stable enough to stay in focus when the subject is not moving. Now I'm going to start moving forward and back and just listen carefully to the lens driving. And pay attention to the hexacon in the viewfinder to show that it is in focus. So as you can tell, it's pretty stable. Now let's get some real movement going here. And notice how long the hexagon disappears for. Now let's switch over to full trackability mode so you can see the stark difference between the two settings. All right, let's go to full trackability here. And now listen to the lens as I don't move, literally don't move. And you can still hear it driving just from the slight variations in my hand movement. Now let's start moving forward and back and again, pay attention to the hexagon and listen carefully to the lens driving. Now let's get some real movement. However, the hexagon does not disappear for nearly as long as it did with stability mode. So this is a good use for erratic moving subjects, songbirds, birds in flight, things with a lot of stop and go, uh, things that have unpredictable movement, then you want to use the trackability mode. Now let's get out of full auto and uh, use the expanded well, actually, before we do that, let's change the other autofocus mode. All right, so let's now change this to type two. So it's only gonna use the autofocus sensor. It's not gonna use the auto exposure sensor. And we are still in trackability. Let's see how this goes. I'm not moving and it's not refocusing. Now let's get a little bit of movement in. And you'll notice on the eyes, it's not quite lining up the way it was with the full auto. 
but it is doing a good job of tracking in regards to uh, speed of acquisition if you look at the hexagon okay and now let's turn stability mode back on in the same type 2 autofocus uh, so it's only using the autofocus sensors and we'll see how much of a difference that makes all right so let's switch this here go to emphasize stability let's do this all over again and here we go as you can hear it's not incrementally switching right it waits So again, this is good for consistent movement uh, that is easily predictable, right? Not for erratic moving subjects. Okay, now let's go to <laughs> type three, which is all the birders favorite uh, autofocus type. So it only uses the autofocus sensor info to track with the selected autofocus points intensively. So basically what it tries to do is maintain everything um, towards the center most focus point. That's what it primarily attempts to do. Now we're still in full auto. Usually you would combine this with uh, one of the autofocus expanded modes. Okay, let's try to get that a bit brighter here little bit So as you can hear, it's basically tracking in real time. So now let's change. Now let's change to trackability and you'll hear how much quicker the lens attempts to reacquire focus. So although stability mode did seem to be focusing pretty much in real time, this is more sensitive to any movement. Now let's do one last test. I'm just gonna wiggle this around and see if the hexagon continues to light up as it's in focus. And as you can see, it is doing a pretty good job of maintaining that it is in focus. So that is type three, which is all the action people. <laughs> that is our go-to in regards to the newfound capabilities of the Pentax K3 Mark III when shooting AFC. However, if the subject may be stopping, you can use type three. I just would not use trackability mode in regards to getting your subject in focus. For subjects that may be stop and go and have smooth movement, consistent uh, movement, then you wanna use stability mode. For erratic moving subjects, again, you wanna use trackability mode because it does a much better job of predicting the location and speed of which uh, the subject will be moving uh, by the time the next picture is taken. 
Okay, now here is my default setting for when I'm out doing bird photography, even though Bodyless Bell is not a bird. But what I do is I use uh, trackability mode, so type 5, uh, and I use type 3 autofocus, um, which as you can see here, I do have it on expanded. I'll just show you here. So it is on expanded, but you see those red areas? That is where it's primarily going to try to maintain focus. So if I focus, you'll just listen to how sensitive this is. Right. However, in regards to reacquiring focus, it is very quick. So that is AFC in regards to which mode to use for your subject. So there you have it. That is uh, basically not even scratching the surface on the Pentax K3 Mark III AFC. So I do understand that there are a lot of people that have run into frustrations in regards to utilizing the camera and not getting the images that they expect when they're using AFC. But as you can see, there are a lot of different parameters that can totally change how the camera reacts to moving subjects. So I'm hoping that the breakdown of this video uh, does help you better understand what the different parameters actually do in real world usage uh if you have any questions about any of this let me know uh I, it may require another follow-up video to further go in depth in regards to these various settings uh my original plan was to actually go out and try to do real time scenario of shooting while filming through the viewfinder but that proved to be extremely difficult so uh i had to just settle on a controlled environment hopefully getting the point across but between type one, type two, type three, and the various autofocus settings, I always call them type one to five, but they're not actually type. They're just AFC sensitivity settings, one to five. So uh, yeah, and I have something in my eye, which is not a scene that I wanna shoot. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so again, I hope that this does help uh, you with your experimentation in regards to trying out the different parameters. There's nothing to be afraid of. Try the different parameters for your specific subject. So things to keep in mind. Sensitivity mode, or sorry, stability mode, not sensitivity mode, stability mode. That is for smooth, predictable moving subjects. Uh, you know, people on a bicycle, just riding by at a consistent speed, uh, cars, motorsports, if they're not at like a braking area, they're just going to be going consistent speed across the track. Uh, you know, just basic traffic, people walking, things like that. Unpredictable subjects, then you absolutely want to use trackability mode. Now, depending on your subject, you really do need to think, is that a predictable movement that'll be happening or it will it be an unpredictable movement and you need to adjust your settings accordingly the only caveat with that is the stability mode works very very well if you want to track a moving subject that may end up becoming still reason being is it doesn't incrementally change the depth mapping as often as it does in trackability mode. So if you are shooting a subject and they, like for example, a bird, the bird's coming in and it lands on a tree. It's no longer moving. Stability mode would be the mode you would want to use for mixed situations like that. It will keep the autofocus stable. That's basically what it means <laughs> in a nutshell. Trackability mode, it is better at tracking unpredictable subjects. Right in the smack middle of all those different settings, you have just your standard mode, which is in between. It's not 
super great for erratic tracking, but it's not terrible in regards to being able to reacquire focus either. So you really need to be aware of the situation you'll be shooting in. And again, don't be afraid to experiment, try out all the different options and things like that. Uh, my suggestion, if you don't need the subject recognition, uh, in other words, if you're not shooting a human being where they have eyes, you're gonna be shooting uh, subjects such as birds, apparently. The subject recognition recognizes birds. It doesn't do eye autofocus on birds, but it will recognize birds. So you can use uh, type one to tie the autofocus and auto exposure settings together uh, with the subject recognition on. It will recognize birds apparently, and uh, you can try from there. My personal experience, I always have the best results when I use expanded large or expanded medium in regards to uh, the way I shoot. Uh, with trackability mode on, so uh, number five, and the autofocus type as type three. So it's intensely tracking the subject, primarily using the center most point as the depth map, uh, you know, and then tracking from there. So those are my suggestions. That is pretty much what I shoot and how I get the results that I get. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, you want me to further deep dive into this, let me know in the comments below. Uh, thank you all again for the support over the years. Really do appreciate it. And if you would like to support more, the info's in the description. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it. I'm going to go. I'll catch you on the next video. I'm out.